We're out here just before dawn on the Sea of Galilee. This is a Sunday morning, just waiting for the sun to come up. Beautifully peaceful morning here. Just thinking about when Jesus told the waters to be still. It probably looked something like that. Up here at the headwaters of the Jordan River, we have some uh, ruins of one of Herod palaces. Mm. We have up here some uh, pomegranates that are ripening. Fig tree. Obviously not the one that Jesus cursed. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then Jesus went into parts of Caesarea Philippi, and he questioned his disciples, saying, Who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say, John the Baptist. Others say, Elijah. Still others say, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter responded by saying, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And in response, Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So you are in Caesarea Philippi. You are in the district of Philip, Herod Philip. Herod, he had three kids, three sons. He divided his kingdom according into three parts and he gave every part to one of his sons, Archelaus in Judea and Epaphras in Tiberia and in the Golan Heights, Philip. So we are in the very top part, northern part, and this belongs to Philip. Yeah, and this the, the place, this is the area uh, which was ruled by Philip, who had a problem with John the Baptist and, and Hasbani. And they, the moment they, or the point they meet together there, it is called the Jordan River. It continues going down the whole way until the Sea of Galilee. Theologians, they do uh, explain the phenomena three in one. It's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and then goes down to the womb of Virgin Mary, which is the Sea of Galilee, delivers Jesus, continues his ministry till Judea, till the Dead Sea, where he dies on the cross, where the Dead Sea is very salty, where the water dies. Okay? So the water comes up from underground, or it just starts flowing out like this? Yeah. Now it is summer. Uh -huh. In winter, it is up till here, the water. Okay. Gushing, you know, all, all these terraces will be covered, the water just above them. And this is the Panias? Panias. Panias. The river Panias.
or just rendering of what this may have looked like. So, in the back of the cave here, to the god of Pan, they say if there's a natural abyss back in there somewhere, I'm not sure exactly where it's at. But anyway, they would throw the um, the sacrifice into the, if the if it disappeared, then the god had accepted the sacrifice. But if the blood of the victim appeared down there in the waters, then the sacrifice was rejected. So, interesting. And just a look back at the temple area. Heading down to back to the bus. We're walking into the area of the church of the primacy of Peter. And this church is built along the area, along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, where they were fishing all night long and they saw Jesus standing on the shore and uh, Jesus had a fire going, he ate some fish and he asked Peter three times, do you love me? And Peter responded, one for each time that Peter denied Jesus. Peter responded that he did, but in Greek, you, the words that Jesus used are the Greek word agape, do you love me? Are you willing to sacrifice yourself for me? Peter responds with a lower level of love, he says, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you as a friend. And so, but as we know, ultimately, uh, Peter was able to sacrifice himself and died as a martyr. This is the area of the Sea of Galilee after the, the, the Mensa Christi means, uh, Mensa means table, uh, Christi of Christ. And so that's where Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, ate. So that the rock was his table. And uh, here we have again this sea where again Jesus looked out toward the apostles as they were fishing in their boats. And this is where they would have hauled their nets uh, ashore. And the 153 uh, fish when he told them to catch, uh, throw it over to the other side. Oh, there's a bigger one. So yes, there really are fish in the Sea of Galilee. To see out across the lake. Over here is Tiberius. It's about 30 some miles all the way around. And across there is the Golan Heights, which is the Israeli occupied area of Syria. Ambrose. I think Ambrose wants to get baptized again. Sorry, buddy. I don't think we can do it more than once. <laughs> so do it again. As we're continuing along the Sea of Galilee, now we're going to visit the uh, church at Capernaum. Jesus said, Woe to you, Bethsaida. And, uh, and Chorazin and I think he is also woke to Capernaum um, because of the work uh, the miracles done in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes and so Jesus issues a curse against these three cities and uh, since then nobody lives in them anymore <laughs> so we do have the church here uh, again this is where Jesus uh, used to stay in his Galilean ministry in this area. Uh, Capernaum, and this is the hometown of Jesus after he has been rebuked from Nazareth. He came and lived in the house of Simon Peter. Uh, Simon Peter house is under the church directly. They built a church on top of it on eight pillars in order not to cover the church and they did the floor of the church from glass. So whenever you are in you can see through to see the mansion of Peter. 
According to the size of that house or the mansion, it is very big in comparison to the fisherman neighborhood to the left side. Which means uh, Peter, he was very wealthy. He used to have boats and he used to hire fishermen to work for him. Walking into the synagogue at Capernaum. And this is where Jesus gave the uh, bread of life discourse where he said, I am the bread of life, come down from heaven. And also where he healed the woman uh, who had the, the flow of blood. You know, the people were pressing in on him. And so he turns around and looks and says, who touched me? So this is actually a rebuilt by the Byzantine. Uh, they, it was destroyed by an earthquake. Uh, and so they rebuilt it on uh, the synagogue, or at least a replica of the synagogue here in Capernaum. Looking down here, you'll see the remains or the foundations of the homes of the uh, fishermen that used to live uh, in this community. Uh, we're still here in Capernaum, and uh, I was just looking at the um, palm trees, and you know, because we have like those those sometimes we have those fan ones, fan shaped ones at uh, St. Benedict's, and so I was wondering if they have like palm tree farms, <laughs> or where do they, where do they all, where do they all come from? Because you don't see, a, I mean, you see some of those trees, but you don't see a lot of them. So anyway, it's one of those things inquiring minds want to know. Getting ready for our Peter's fish meal. So, get some tilapia. Here's my St. Peter's fish, and they bring you the whole fish. Bon appetit! We are at the Duke in Altum church, which means put out into the deep. I'm going to celebrate Sunday Mass here. is the altar of the church, looking out towards the Galilee Sea, or Sea of Galilee, excuse me. All right, so uh, since we were not able to make our Legion of Mary back home, uh, we decided to have a Legion of Mary meeting here. Um, unfortunately, we were not able to pack the statue, uh, so we had to set up a uh, alternative uh, uh, statue of Mary and uh, Vexillum, but we do have we do have some flowers, and so we were able to have our Legion of Mary meeting right here in the Holy Land. So that was a gr uh, beautiful grace that we were able to have uh, while we are on this pilgrimage. Well, um, someone told me, "Ask and you shall receive; seek and you will find; knock and the door will be opened." And I've experienced that quite a bit here. And uh, the other day, my friend Kelly put a post on um, for uh, Mary Magdalene Novena. And on it, she talked about a church in Magdala that had this beautiful painting. And this is it. And so I inquired to see if we were going to that church. And he said, oh, we just went through Magdala. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then um, I asked George about it, and George said it wasn't on the agenda. And I just resolved myself to, it wasn't meant to be. And then today, he said we were kind of going off of the agenda a little bit. And um, the readings today were about Jesus being with the multitude from the Sea of Galilee, and that's where we were. And it was it was so wonderful to experience the Word, the Living Word, today. And to back it up a little bit, the first day we were here was the reading about um, Jacob's name being changed to Israel. The first day we arrived in Israel, and I just said to Doug how cool that was. And so today, uh, all the rest of the week, our readings have been in the different places we've been. So I didn't really know what the readings were going to be about today. So when we got there and 
got to have a reading of um, Jesus preaching from the boat. And then you said mass from the boat. From the boat. <laughs> And An then, altar that looked like a boat. Mm -hmm. And the Sea of Galilee behind us. Yeah. And then um, coming out of church thinking, oh, this must not have been church. And then going downstairs, and George says, oh, by the way, there's a chapel down there. Walk in there, and I see this mural of the same mural that Kelly had put on her website, and how moved she was by it. and. When I walked in there, I just started to cry. I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord, here it is. You're allowing me to see this. And um, it just is unbelievable how um, the beauty of the area and um, being here every day, it's like, we're, we're really here. And uh, to think about how that woman had the faith to just touch Jesus and how she was healed. And with it being the 100th anniversary of Our Lady of Panama, we have a statue in our church that says, don't touch me, let me touch you. And I thought, Jesus lets us touch him. And he also lets us receive him, body, blood, soul, humanity. So it was another amazing day in the Holy Land. And uh, this picture, I had gone down the stairs before sharing, and as soon as I got down there, I actually turned left first, and there was this beautiful pencil drawing of Mother Teresa, and I was over there looking at it because I know Sharon had just came from Rome for her canonization, so I thought she's really going to want to see this. So as I was heading back to the stairs to go look for Sharon, I saw the mural inside that chapel, and I walked in there and was just in awe of it, and I took several pictures and stood there and thought, you know, Sharon's got to see this. So I came out, and when I came out, I just missed her coming down the stairs somehow. I think I went right back to Mother Teresa, and I caught her coming out of the chapel saying, this is it, this is it. And I'm like, what's it? What's it? I, I didn't know the story about the, the text or the, that she had gotten. So um, after we left the church, we walked up to the gift shop. And I, I was way ahead of Sharon because I think she was holding back to, to make sure you went downstairs. So I was with the group up there, and they had these pictures for sale. So I was really looking at one, and I thought, I really need to get this for Sharon because that would really be special. But I was like discerning, you know, should I spend the money? And I said, oh. We don't have the wall space. Yeah, maybe I won't do it. Well, I was doing that right by Deb and Randy, and uh, then Deb was discerning whether she wanted to get one, and finally she said, I'm going to get one, and she got one. And uh, we kind of commented about it on the way to the bus, saying, oh, that's really nice that you got one. That's really cool. And we get in the bus, and she turns around and hands me the tube and said, this is for you. I want you to have this. And it was very touching because she, she said that, you know, because we're such good friends. And, and even being from states apart, I don't know, thousand miles apart or so, we always stay in touch and, and have seen each other quite a bit. So. It was just really nice to you know have friends like that sharing this and now this is something that I will frame. We will find space on the wall and it will be a great memory of our trip here.